everybody, and welcome to Northern Lion Plays XCOM Enemy Within. So, you might be a little confused. Northern Lion, didn't you do a Let's Play of XCOM Enemy Unknown? Yeah, and it was awesome. It spawned the legend of Roll Fizzlebeef, who is, uh, well, I guess, you know, Mystery Science Theater spawned the legend of Roll Fizzlebeef, but I co-opted it for myself, and we had a fun time. It was a lot of fun, it was taxing, and I enjoyed it a great deal. XCOM Enemy Within is the new DLC that just came out, uh, probably around the time that this recording is actually going up, and it basically adds a staggering bevy of new content to the game, new weapons, new abilities to customize your soldier with, not just like, oh, he's got a pink helmet instead of a yellow one. No, you can tinker around with his DNA and be like, hey, he's a superhuman goddamn monster who can, you know, jump on top of a roof in a single bound now. You can also, you know, fuse machine guns to their arms. That's all the impetus I need to do another series. So, uh, I apologize if you watched Enemy Unknown and we're like, eh, I don't want to see any more of this, but it seems like most people, uh, do want to see some more XCOM, so we're gonna play Enemy Within. I'm gonna play it on Classic, which scares the shit out of me. Because I did play through it on normal before, and I had a reasonably tough time. Uh, but we'll play it through on classic now, and hopefully my previous XCOM experience will allow me to at least do okay. And we'll start the game, and there's going to be cutscenes. The cutscenes may or may not be exactly the same as the ones you saw in Enemy Unknown. But uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Because it's been, you know, over a year since I played that. So, get ready. Hopefully it'll just start right away. Enable tutorial experience? Fuck no. I will probably live to regret that decision. But for now... As soon as this cutscene loads, I will shut up so you can get a kind of feel for the preamble of where the story's going here. Why do you always wander towards the thing that fell from the sky? What they don't picture is the smart people who are running away right now like, Shit, I got responsibilities. I can't be abducted by aliens right now. Oh, don't be a baby about it. It happens to all of us at some point in our lives. You're, you maybe you die of old age, happy, you know, asleep in your home. Sometimes you get sucked by a big alien goo into an unfamiliar canister, an abomination from the galaxy, parts unknown. Everyone dies alone. And on camera, apparently. Hello, Commander. Hello, Optimus Prime. In light of the recent extraterrestrial incursion. This Council of Nations has convened to approve the activation of the XCOM project. You have been chosen to lead this initiative. To oversee our first and last line of defense. Your efforts will have considerable influence on this planet's future. We urge you to keep that in mind as you proceed. Alright, so I believe that that is uh, the same cutscene that opens XCOM Enemy Unknown. The story takes kind of similar beats throughout it, uh, at least the first six or seven hours, which is what I played uh, before the uh, retail version came out. Uh, we'll see if it takes any twists and turns after that, but there are some new things added as well. Um, we have some options here. This is a very important first choice. Where do we put our base? Wherever we put our base, we get a bonus for it, I believe. Uh, right off the bat. Usually you have to launch satellites in all of the countries within a continent to get the bonus, but we get one right off the bat, I think. Think. Um, so, North America's is aircraft and aircraft weapons cost 50% less to purchase. Pretty useful, but it's not my typical focus when I play the game. It's kind of an afterthought for me. In Europe, laboratories and workshops cost 50% less to build and maintain. Pretty useful because you need those for faster research and to, uh, you know, build extra facilities faster and weapons and whatnot. Uh, Asia gives you uh, the ability to buy upgrades from the foundry and the officer training school for half off, which is pretty good. South America has autopsies and interrogations which are completed instantly, which is really nice because it saves you a ton of time and research. Africa, monthly XCOM funding increased by 30%. I'm gonna need money, so I'm gonna go with Africa here. I think I did Europe or North America in my first playthrough. 
uh, that was on the channel. So I'm going to talk over this guy a little bit because I can do the mission briefing myself. It doesn't matter all that much. You might be thinking, you know, what's what's the hook here? What is different with Enemy Within that was not in Enemy Unknown? We're going to find out right from the get-go here. The game does not take very long uh, to explain to you just what the heck is going on. This is actually important, I think, to, for me to listen here. All right, apparently it's not. So again, you might be saying, like, this, this looks fairly similar. Uh, to enemy unknown. That is the damn truth, but you might be noticing there's these two things up here in the top right. If you didn't watch my Let's Look at, these are meld. Basically, this is another form of uh, resource in the game that we're gonna need to get, and this is gonna fuel our ability to do genetic modifications and cybernetic modifications to our soldiers, which is one of the big hooks of playing this. So let's just take a look at our soldiers quickly. We got Gordon Robertson, Waseme Balo, Stanislaw Zielinski, and Alice Gray. All right, we got a nice little mix here. Two male, two female. That's the kind of dynamic you want here. A perfect ratio in case you want to start some storybook romances. So I'm going to uh, go over the uh, the play-by-play -play and, and the color commentary, I guess, for what I'm going to be doing here. Basically, I'm going to start by playing fairly cautiously, but I also need to push ahead a little bit more than I would previously do uh, in Enemy Unknown. Because those meld canisters, the thing about them that's scary is that they're time-sensitive, which means they are, um, you know, after... X number of turns, they actually stop being uh, something that we can harvest. So I'm just kind of cheating here, taking a quick look around to see if maybe I can notice um, some canisters. Maybe they're actually inside of the shoe shop paper company? I thought they were shoe paper first, and I was like, Jesus, Egypt's got some industries I've never heard of before in my life. So, oh, okay, so we have discovered aliens. Not any, uh, not any meld, but finding the aliens themselves is scary enough. Um, so, this is one of the things I really like about Enemy Within. We actually don't have a shot here, so I should just get behind cover. Um, is that, you know, previously, and this is something that I actually saw, um, Russ Pitts from Polygon touch on in his review. I was just reading through those today, because I, you know, attempted to see what other people saw in the game, uh, after I played it through for myself. Uh, but, uh, he said, you know, when you play, uh, Enemy Unknown, one of the best strategies that you can use is just be super, super cautious with, like, absolutely everything that you do. And it's not like it's a bad strategy at all. It's actually a fantastic strategy. Um, but it also makes things a little bit too easy sometimes to just kind of, like, creep up and overwatch. Well, with Meld, you want to be a little bit more aggressive so that you can actually harvest those resources. Uh, but that means you're going to be a little bit more exposed as well. So hopefully we'll be able to make this work for ourselves. I did put my... Uh, Units in Overwatch. I think I can hear them doing like kind of a psychic melt here, which is actually advantageous for me because if I kill the one that is uh, linking to the other one psychically, I should be able to actually uh, get the get the kill on both of them. You know, if you kill the mother, you kill the parasite as well. Clearly, you can tell how I feel about pregnancy. Um, okay, so there's the the mind melded one. We need to do four damage to him, but it's probably easier to do four damage to him than it is to do. Um, you know, the three damage to him and three damage to him again. Anyway, um, we're going to move up slightly just to increase our uh, odds of hitting the mind melded one a little bit. 45% chance to hit is not very good. Um, but I think it may actually be the maximum for rookies on this very first mission with, like, the weaponry that I have. So it might be prudent to actually just toss a grenade in here. And uh, as a result of that car being there, the d grenade does three damage, and I think blowing up the car will do, like, another, you know, one to four, which will be enough um, to get the kill here. Hopefully. Uh, nope, that only did three damage. The car maybe is not going to blow up until the next turn. So, you know, we got to see what brand that is, because it can, we've proven it, withstand a grenade hit right to the kisser. Um, so we could always toss another grenade at it. But I think what I'm going to do instead is maybe I'll use my pistol, because uh, we could save ammo for our assault rifle. It's got the same odds of hitting. 45, not particularly strong. Oh, it did get the job done. Fantastic. Okay, so the first two sectoids should be down then. Oh, wait a minute. Did the other sectoid actually live there? He did. That was unexpected. Um, I'm not sure if maybe that's a modification from Classic, or because I didn't kill when I was on the Overwatch, if maybe that uh, improved the survivability of it. Anyway, weirdly enough, uh, we did not get the kill there. Uh, but then we got it again on a 45% chance we got a critical hit, which is remarkably lucky. So, we continue with our primary objective, which is uh, A, survive, and B, we'll, we'll try to get this meld canister as well. Uh, and keep all of our soldiers uh, from getting hurt, presumably, so I can use them immediately on the next mission. We'll probably only cover one or two missions here, but I definitely want to get the meld. See, that would have done so much damage if it actually exploded. Uh, we have one more sectoid. It is worth noting that I think if we finish the mission, we automatically get the meld canisters. Which is something you may not expect. Okay, so that's going to hit. The game still is guilty of switching to cutscenes when you have a successful uh, attack sometimes. Which takes a little bit of the... Um, I wouldn't necessarily say the guesswork, but it takes a little bit of the uncertainty out of it when you're... Uh, 
wondering if you're going to get a, a, an important hit in. So I'm guessing that the meld is going to be in here somewhere. Normally you can cheese the system a little bit by looking for it. Uh, just by kind of like moving the, uh, the camera around. Okay, so we have three more sectoids. Right away I'm noticing the difference between normal and uh, classic difficulty. There's 50% more sectoids. Oh, she is not where I thought she was. I really thought she was just, uh, she was right here. So I could put her into Overwatch and maybe get a free hit next turn, but unfortunately that is not the case. And uh, is this our last move? It is. So with three Sectoids being able to fire here, it's totally possible that we could lose our Rookie if she gets hit twice. Alright, well, that blew up the door, but I was just going to kick that in anyway. Uh, and they'll probably do a Mind Meld here. So if we can just sneak in a grenade and then maybe get a, a lucky hit or two on the next one, we might be able to finish the mission right away. It sucks that we haven't seen any of the meld canisters, but again, we will just get the meld canisters. Oh, that's not so bad. Um, we will just get the meld canisters uh, anyway if we complete the mission and they're not lost. It will tell us if they're lost, so um, let's get behind cover here. We may have a shot. Good, we do. Uh, we have no grenade with this one. Now I'm confused. Maybe we, we should have killed the one with three first, not the one with four. That was my mistake. Okay, so if we kill this alien, actually, the other sectoid will die. Okay, so that was the uh, the right decision there, I think. I, I can't see yet. Just give it a second. Maybe not? Okay, I am, I'm clearly out of my element here. Unless we did get two kills there. It's hard for me to see. I Maybe I see one corpse. Anyway, I uh, don't really have a good shot at the other one in there. Why is it that I can only move, like, two steps without dashing? That's strange. Can I fit a grenade into this office? Uh, it appears not. I could blow up some cover, but that doesn't seem very useful. Um, let's just take a, you know, one in four shot in the dark here. We've gotten pretty lucky with our odds so far. That one didn't hit. That's acceptable. Uh, I think, uh, if I move over here, I should, unfortunately, still not have a shot, but that's fine. We'll just put her into Overwatch, or him into Overwatch. Uh, and then we'll take a location. location over here, and we might have a shot, but yeah, it's unlikely. Uh, so there's either one or two sectoids left. I am a little concerned for our, um, soldier over here. Please don't get hit again. Alright, just blew up like half of the building. I should probably get outside, <laughs> this is my thinking. Um, maybe this is a pretty good spot? Okay, I do have a shot. 25% chance to hit is not very good. Oh, it actually killed him! So we got a rookie, and we finished the mission, and we got the meld canister. Awesome. The labs are on high alert. So. Teams are standing by for your orders. We can begin researching the newly recovered artifacts immediately. We will begin researching the meld immediately, Dr. Volin, because, of course, uh, I absolutely want to make sure that I get these cybernetic enhancements and gene mods up as soon as possible. We'll probably go for cybernetics. Um, I'm going to skip through this cutscene. This one, I feel, is relatively unimportant. It's basically just setting the stage, but I can set the stage for you myself. Um, so we got a few promotions here. Gordon Robertson, Robertson from Scotland is going to become a heavy, which gives him the opportunity to shoot a rocket. And also, you know, there's various other perks that are here that we will uh, be able to assign as they get a little further. I'm, I'm, I'm breezing through the, the stuff here. By the way, that guy's a support. And this guy is an assault, which is, uh, or this lady is an assault, which is awesome. So we have a nice little collection so far. Sadly, no uh, sniper, but um, I'm, I'm finding it very difficult to talk while these people are talking. And the research team is waiting your orders. We'll get started as soon as you give the order, Commander. Okay. Dr. Shen is probably going to talk to me, too. I'm going to skip through a bunch of these cutscenes, because I'm assuming if you're watching a Let's Play of Enemy Within, uh, you've either seen previous play of Enemy Unknown, or uh, you're familiar with it because you played through it yourself. So you don't need to see all this interstitial stuff. Uh, but I will explain very, very briefly what's going on up here. And, you know, you don't really need to understand this in order to understand what we're doing. Uh, this is the second phase of gameplay in uh, Enemy Unknown slash Enemy Within. Basically, we have... Um, let's go to our map here, because this is the easiest way to explain it. Oh, it won't let me go to the Situation Room yet? Okay, because we're too early. Okay, well, when we finish a mission, we get resources in the form of credits, or meld, and, and or meld, I guess. Scientists, engineers, and uh, alien artifacts and body parts, and we can use those uh, in our research den uh, to start new research products, so or projects, I should say. So why don't we start meld recombination? By the time this finishes, we will be able to uh, do cybernetic enhancements or genetic engineering, as we so fi feel. This is our engineering bay. Um, using money, primarily, uh, we can buy 
uh, items here that have already been researched, so we'll buy a med kit because that's important. We can also build a satellite, which is extremely important for what's going to happen in the future. We might as well get one of those on the go right now. And we can also uh, start building facilities, and, and this is extremely important as well because we want to have as many satellite uplinks as possible. We want to maybe build uh, power generators so that we can uh, get uh, more and more facilities up. Basically, we're going to need to build this out with with a lot of uh, stuff here. So I'm going to build... Uh, we'll make the right side here, our power generator side. The reason it's important to keep this in mind is because uh, there's actually adjacency bonuses. I, oh, I can't quite build it yet. Uh, I could probably sell things on the gray market, but anyway. Uh, there's adjacency bonuses, so if you have a power generator next to another power generator, you get more power than just, the, you know, two times the individual level, if that makes sense. Okay, um... Where, where do I go now? Probably mission control next, but I don't actually want to do that just yet. First things first, I want to customize our soldiers. So this is Stanislaw Zielinski. I believe he is from Poland. Uh, I'm testing my knowledge of world flags now. So we're going to start customizing these guys so that when they die and there is permadeath, we feel it a little bit more. This guy is going to be our brand new Roll Fizzlebeef. So, um, I don't want to change his face, you know, that's, he, he was given that by his parents, that's acceptable. Uh, but I do want to deck him out in this sweet-ass StarCraft armor here, and why don't we make sure that we never miss him on the battlefield, uh, by making sure that he is bright yellow. So, roll Fizzlebeef, the yellow. I don't want to make it sound like he's cowardly. Why don't you say that to his face, not on the internet, see what happens. Uh, then we got Gordon Robertson, he is, uh, heavy as well, wait a minute. Oh, roll Fizzlebeef's a support? That ain't right. I'm sorry, I gotta change your name again. Um, since you are a support, I will make you Florence Florenzio. That makes it a little bit more masculine. Nightingalia. There you go. He's the Polish Italian male Florence Nightingale. Uh, so this will be our Rolf Fizzlebeef from Scotland. Which is Rolf Fizzlebeef sounds like something you could actually order on a menu in Scotland. According to Jay Smith OTI. Anyway, yeah, don't yell at him. Yell at me. Uh, sorry, don't yell at me. Yell at him. And we got to make sure again that this guy's not... Um, he's easy to find on the battlefield. So let's go with this sweet Minnesota Vikings. Uh, yellow and purple here. And then we've got Waseme Balo. And she is an assault. Okay. So we should actually name... We'll name her something that's fitting. She can be Android Cactus. So I don't know if this is actually going to work out, but she'll be Assault Android Cactus. Now available on Steam Early Access. Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll give her some special armor as well. She should be in a little bit more of a, uh, yeah, like a looser, or like a sleeker armor so she can run around. Unlike the, the heavy. And we'll make sure she is visible to us by making her pink and blue. Not because she's a lady, just because it is a very striking color. Now, Emma Hill, all these other scrubs, they don't get names. When you graduate to a squatty, you get a name. Okay. Let's do our mission now. Uh, so we get to choose, probably. I want to at least do this episode until the meld kind of finishes, so we can um, at least start work on like a cybernetics lab or something like that. Um, we have a few options. So we can either go to Nagoya, Japan, Lille, France, or Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, and the most important thing here is the rewards. So Sao Paulo carries a reward of 200 credits. Uh, France carries a reward of four scientists, and there's difficulty differences between, oh, actually, they're all the same difficulty here. Uh, and Japan carries a reward of four engineers. What's the panic like? Alright, so we're gonna go to France. Um, four scientists doesn't really appeal to me. It's probably much better to get the 200 credits. Yeah, uh, let's go for the credits instead. I was gonna say we'll go to France because the panic's a little higher, but we'll just maybe prioritize a satellite launch there to lower the panic. So instead, we'll just go with uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, because I could really use 200 credits to, you know, buy another satellite and fund my uh, cybernetics and gene modifications that we'll probably be able to do after this. So, we have, um, you know, the soldiers that I actually recognize, and then we have our red shirt here. Uh, again, Emma Hill. Hopefully she'll be able to turn this out for the best. But uh, Florence Nightingalia, since you are a support... Sorry, Florenzio Nightingalia, since you are a support, I will give you a med kit. Everyone else, I would say, is cool with what they got. Now, I'm very concerned about our chances immediately, uh, because being on Classic has really given me pause. I I'd, I'd fell into a comfort zone when I was playing through the, the most of Enemy Within that I played through before the retail version actually came out. Uh, I was like, oh yeah, I'm familiar with this. Two sectoids, two thin men, boom, mission's over. Six sectoids total is a little bit more difficult, and I'm wondering if Classic will also introduce special types like the Chrysalid a little earlier. Anyway. 
let's hopefully be able to actually uh, find some mel canis meld canisters, I should say, over the course of this episode, uh, or this uh, mission here. Otherwise, um, you're just going to have to take my word that they actually do I exist. So we will move our soldiers out to the appropriate positions to start with, and we'll maybe start to be a little bit more aggressive, and, and we'll, we'll spread out a kind of a wider path here to start with than we might otherwise, just so we can get eyes on uh, the meld as soon as possible. Because I really want to take an aggressive approach. I'm, I'm probably going to prioritize cybernetic enhancements instead of gene modifications, because in my Let's Look At, I talked about all the gene modification stuff that I've done, but the cybernetic stuff sounds super cool as well. So um, that, that's probably what we'll go for. So there's a meld canister. You can sort of see it in the shadows over there. Uh, I'm guessing this will probably aggro some aliens no um, but there are some uh, or there is a melt canister over here so we'll just uh, start moving basically like all of our troops over to that so we'll send this guy dashing over here sorry this lady dashing over here but I, I, I should talk about this or maybe I shouldn't if I accidentally uh, you know yes, use the wrong gender pronoun it is not uh, you know some laden like anti-feminist tendency or anti-transgender tendency or anything like that. I do my best to be conscious of stuff like that. If uh, I offend you, I apologize. Please rest assured that it is not meant with ill will. Uh, it is just, you know, stupid is as stupid does sometimes. Anyway, now that uh, I've brought up something probably far too serious for this mock alien apocalypse, let's uh, start getting to work on getting this meld canister so you can see how that works. It's, you know, you don't need to see getting the meld canister every single time. Um, but just seeing it once maybe can give you a feel for, for how this works. So basically, we've got to get over here before turn one, if that makes sense. Because it takes an action, uh, or at least after you dash, you can't do it. So you've got to be in there and still have one action point remaining. Um, but at turn zero, you don't get a turn zero. You know, it's not like Mega Man. You don't, you don't get a zero with life. Uh, instead, you've got to be there when it still has one remaining on the countdown. And then you just click on it and you're good to go. Now, the good news is it does not appear that uh, there are any aliens in the vicinity. So I should be reasonably clear to kind of send uh, this dude over here. And, you know, if this car explodes, we're going to have to deal with some serious shit. Um, I can hear the aliens. Or maybe I can't. Uh, and I can get close enough. I actually don't know if this is going to be close enough to uh, actually deactivate the canister. It's not. <laughs> That's so sad. Uh, I think I actually might be able to scum this up a bit. Uh, if I use run and gun, which allows me to fire after my second move, I think I can just move next to it and then click on it. And then go into Overwatch. Alright, so that was a little scummy, but it got the job done. We'll send Emma Hill over here, and you know, now we have a line of sight inside of the building, and we don't see any aliens. Now you've seen me collect a meld canister, so you understand how it works. It's how we're, it's the same way every other collection of an object or, you know, finishing an, of an objective works in uh, Enemy Unknown. Basically, you just go over to it and click on it. You're defusing a bomb, go over to it and click on it. You're planting a bomb, go over to the space and click on it, and it, you know, gets the job done. You don't need a hacking minigame like Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution or anything like that to make this work. Um, so, by the way, I should point out, even though we can't see that other meld canister, although I'm guessing it's, like, right here, um, the timer for it ticks down. Now, I'm not sure if it ticks down faster when you, uh, actually do have a line of sight on it and you know that you've seen it, uh, but it, it is still ticking down regardless. I'm gonna send my rookie in here. This scares me a little bit. Okay, we do still don't see anybody, which is good. And, um, we'll just, con oh, we see, we hear aliens from over there, so I should probably start moving, uh, my soldiers a little bit more to this side, just in case that rookie ends up needing some support. Uh, and, again, we'll do standard enemy unknown style moves here, basically. Uh, so I'll be sending soldiers, uh, oh, that was a really bad move. It was a misclick. That one needed an are you sure button. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll send them forward, like, half of their maximum movement, so that we have an action point remaining where you can send them into Overwatch. Uh, we want to rotate this back. So it, it's nice to be able to rotate the camera angle, but then, like, as soon as I do it, I'm like, okay, gotta switch it back, otherwise my mental construct of this map doesn't apply anymore. There is the other meld canister. Uh, it hasn't actually shown up as being visible to us yet uh, on our, like, mission objective screen, but that's fine. So, uh, there could be aliens in that room. Is that Cliffy B? <laughs> I think one of those portraits was Cliffy B. I don't know who the other ones were, at least not on first sight, but, uh... It looks a lot like Cliffy B. I don't know if this is supposed to be Michael Richards. Um, and I apologize if the other person in those posters is, is or in those pictures is, is watching and is mad that I don't recognize them. Uh, no, no harm meant. Uh, so I should be able to just toss one grenade in here with our rookie and it'll blow up these uh, 
pistol parts, but so be it. Dr. Volan will get up in my grill and be like, that was fan. Yeah, okay, again, she's getting up on my face. Hey, don't blow up the aliens. It'd be way better if you just let your soldiers get killed in the process. Um, anyway, we got uh, we got two kills there, which is pretty important. And as a rookie, that uh, will probably allow the rookie to squad or level up to a squaddy next time. Maybe we actually do only have four sectoids on this mission. If so, that would be a welcome uh, change of pace for sure. So, we do have a, a, a two overwatches here. If we could just hit one of those, all right, well, you know, hopefully those bullets don't go down and kill anybody uh, in the distant future. Um, we have the opportunity, unfortunately, not to... 50% hmm, chance to hit. So, we, we have a, a tough choice here. What we could do is uh, toss a shot out here, and we'll have a 50% chance to likely kill one of these sectoids. What I'm going to do instead is, uh, you know, I am a uh, support, so why don't we throw a smoke grenade? And what this will do is convey an aim disadvantage to the enemy. So I just placed it in just the right way, hopefully, so that all three of these units are actually behind uh, the cover of smoke. This will not give them a huge bonus, but if it just makes one of the aliens miss, it's substantially better, because it means that we're probably not going to die, which is, you know, one of the perks of... Uh, or one of, the, one of the best parts about playing the game. Oh, actually, uh, my support inside of the smoke then got hit with a critical hit and got killed. So, losing our squaddy support there is pretty disappointing, but at least it's early on, so um, that it's not an enormous concern, I think. So, I can toss another grenade here. I think you can move once and then toss a grenade as well. And I, I'm tossing grenades because it's the easiest way to make sure that you have uh, killed the aliens. It does cost you parts, and you can use those parts. You can either sell them on the gray market for extra credits, which is important, uh, or you can um, use those for extra research or, you know, extra engineering, maybe, I think, as well. But uh, it's it's also very nice to just, uh, you know, take out aliens as soon as possible and make your life a lot easier. This would be very nice if it hit. It actually did, and it got the kill, which is good. Uh, and we have Android Cactus here. She cannot run and use a grenade. But I can run and gun, sorry, she cannot use run and gun and use a grenade afterwards, but uh, if I run and gun her out here, she may have a shot with the pistol. Um, the shotgun is a 1% chance, never tell me the odds, but the pistol is a 30% chance, which is at least half decent even though it missed. You know, hindsight's 20-20. Uh, this does give me, uh, a, I'm a little bit closer to the sectoid basically, which is the other reason I did run and gun now. Please don't get hit. Okay, so at least... I believe that this will be the last sectoid. That car is going to explode, but we're too far away. Um, I could either go get this meld canister, or I could just kill the sectoid. And I think it's smart to just kill the sectoid. Uh, because in doing so, I will be, be able to ensure that I get the meld canister anyway, if this is the last sectoid alive. Uh, so we're taking a 40% chance here. Never send a rookie to do a squaddy's job, because that went uh, absolutely terribly. Let's put ourselves completely outside of cover here and, and check out our odds. So, um, we have a 46% chance to hit with this shotgun. What do we have to hit with our LMG right now? 27. So, I'm gonna... Here's how I'm probably gonna do it. I don't want to blow up any more aliens than is necessary. We'll take the shot here, and if we miss, then I'll use the grenade from uh, Android Cactus, our assault. Uh, and that will allow us to ensure the kill. But, I might as well check this first just to see if we can avoid using explosives. Alright, this is not a great mission, but I'm assuming that this is going to be the end of said mission. There's like 20 bounces on this thing. I think I might have thrown it a little wrong. Ended up being a direct hit, actually. So that should be the end of this mission. Uh, not a great one. Apparently losing one operative is good. That's a quarter of our squad. I don't know if I share his enthusiasm for... Uh, or his positivity for our mission there, but uh, shit happens sometimes. Losing a support is annoying, but we did get a sniper in the process. You can tell that she's uh, gonna be a good sniper because, you know, she blew up three units with grenades there. Uh, but we lose our support. Annoying. But we get to keep the med kit. Alright, so this is another... well, we got two medals there. Uh, this is another thing that's been added in Enemy Within, is that you actually have the opportunity to award medals to your soldiers, and we'll probably end the episode sh shortly after this, but we have these uh, medals, uh, excuse me, Central, I can handle this, okay? This isn't my first rodeo. So we can rename our medals, I think I'm gonna go with one, um, we'll take our uh, Pizzle, Pizza Hut player of the game, 
Uh, this is going to be the metal that we get most often, probably. And we'll assign it a power. Plus 5 aim against enemies in full cover, or plus 5 defense when in cover. Let's uh, make it a little aggressive. Plus 5 aim against enemies in full cover. And then we'll award this medal. Who was the player of the game last time? You know what? Emma Hill, you, you killed three, you were a rookie, uh, you came out on uh, your, your first mission and did a very good job, so you're probably going to be really disappointed that I'm going to award this and every medal to Roll Fizzle Beef, who I want to get completely stacked and be the ubermensch of XCOM Enemy Within. So, he'll salute me, thanks coach, uh, free personal pan pizza as well with every uh, purchase of a Pizza Hut player of the game medal. Uh, we also got the Defenders medal, so we'll rename this, uh, and this can be the... Um, Doritos slam dunk of the show. All right, so obviously this is going to um, the uh, roll. Or sorry, yeah, roll fizzle beef as well. We can have never panic as a result of as a result of allies getting wounded or killed. That's pretty useful actually. Or medikits and restorative mist heal two HP more when used on the soldier. I like that one because we'll be using medikits more often probably. So we're gonna give both of our uh, medals here to roll fizzle beef because that just seems like the right move, right? Doesn't he look like a man who could use some medals? So hang some on that King Arthur like jawline there. Okay. Um, now, they want us to go to the situation room. We might have to listen to some dialogue here. I. You just relax. Do I have a. I can't even launch a satellite yet, so just relax. Um, we do have a satellite deployment facility. This is just the last thing I'm going to cover because it's very important here. What is our current uh, satellite capacity? We can have two in orbit. I want more than that. So we're going to spend some credits here in engineering, building uh, an access lift down to the next level, and we can um, excavate. There's no excavating to be done. Okay, that's fine. Um, we will build a facility here, and this will be another satellite uplink, but first we need the power generator to be built. Okay, fair enough. All right, let's let a little bit of time go by, but we're not going to uh, do another mission. We'll just see if the meld finishes researching. And people should be healed as well. Our power generator should go up. That's our power generator cutscene. Uh, and one of our units did get healed. So just quickly, I will go engineering, build facilities. Uh, we'll build a... Ooh, not enough engineers on staff. That means I have to build a workshop, which I can't. Okay, that sucks. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get some more engineers soon. I don't think I can just hire engineers from... No, they can. I can hire more soldiers, but not engineers. We have to earn those through missions or build laboratories. So... Uh, we'll have an access lift done, which is important. I may actually want to quickly do some excavating here. It's important to get this infrastructure in place as soon as possible. Yeah, we'll excavate that. And we'll get ready to build a, a cybernetics lab, actually, because that's... In two days, I think we'll have the opportunity to do so. Uh, and I'll probably let that cutscene play. Because this is new! So, what is it, Doctor? It's... Remarkable. The crystalline structure housed within the canister is actually a suspension containing billions of cybernetic nanomachines, each made up of both organic and mechanical components. My team's analysis indicates these microscopic robots are capable of assembling mechanical structures with unprecedented efficiency. With further study and some specialized facilities, we may be able to engineer a sort of cyber suit that interfaces with the human body. My team is more interested in the possibility of physically altering the tissue itself, incorporating aspects of the alien's own genetic adaptations by using the nanites to fuse the foreign material. The commander will have to decide where the greatest advantage lies. Is there anything you agree on? Given the apparent purpose of the nanites, they allow combining organic materials with one another, or with machines. We have at least agreed to call them... Meld. Pretty cool, right? So it kind of sets the stage. you got competing desires here between the uh, research lab and the engineering lab. Maybe I won't spoil what I'm going to go for and we'll actually end the episode here instead. Let me just quickly assign some extra research. Um, these are just genetic modifications as well as other things that we can do here. Um, but I'll, we'll research weapon fragments so that hopefully Come we can on. build laser rifles as I soon as possible. But um, that'll be when I will, uh, or where I will end the episode. So first off, I would encourage you guys to leave your support in the comments below. Let me know whether your team meld, or sorry, team uh, 
Gene Lab or Team Cybernetics Lab? Do you want to see sweet ass glow in the dark soldiers, or do you want to see sweet ass mechanized soldiers with flamethrower dicks? Um, I know where I'm going to cast my vote, but I'm interested to see where the uh, kind of popular opinion lies. Additionally, since this is this is the first episode of a new series, please show your support if you enjoyed it. If you made it this far, I assume you did enjoy it, so you can just click the like button and help me out a lot, and that would actually be a great deal of service to me, and I would be in your debt. In any case. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode so far. If you want to check out Enemy Within for yourself, there should be a link in the video description below to go pick it up on Steam. And it should be out right now as well. If you enjoyed Enemy Unknown, I would encourage you to pick up Enemy Within. It is uh, It fits over top of it and makes this into kind of like the Criterion Collection Game of the Year edition uh, of Enemy Unknown that I have wanted for so long. But again, in any case, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks in advance for your support. Team Mech, I'll see you later.